Hi there, and welcome to today's webinar, sponsored by Inside GNSS and Inside Unmanned Systems and Quascom, and hosted by WebAttract. I'm Lori Dearman, Senior Webinar Producer with WebAttract, and I'll be one of your moderators for today's session. And in just a moment, we'll be introducing our panel of experts as today's webinar reveals the inner workings of patrol, OS, NMA implementation, as explained by these leaders who have contributed to the development of this vital service. You'll also have an opportunity to have your questions answered at midpoint and at the end of the presentation during the Ask the Expert panel session with all of our panelists today. Now we've invited you along with over 275 professionals from 33 countries representing a variety of industries and over the next 90 minutes, regardless of your industry segment or your location, we're confident that you'll find today's webinar of value. Before we get started, I would like to bring on Richard Fisher, publisher of Inside GNSS, Inside Unmanned Systems. We'd like to take just a moment to welcome you and introduce our sponsor and our main moderator for today's session. Richard? Thanks so much, Lori. Appreciate it. On behalf of Inside GNSS, Inside Unmanned Systems, and today's sponsor, Quascom, I extend a warm welcome to our audience from around the world for today's webinar. We're delighted you're with us today. Now, I'd like to introduce Alessandro Posiban, Director of Business Development at Quascom. Alessandro. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to organize this webinar with you and the rest of the team. Uh, as you know, Quascom, uh, we are always pushing the innovation in the domain of robust navigation, uh, and we, we are playing a key role in Galileo authentication, supporting the European Commission and the USPA from the concept definition up to the design and validation. Uh, in Quascom, we are also growing on the application side, uh, where we have developed flexible products uh, using a software-defined radio approach. Our GNSS receiver has been uh, tested in different space applications, including collaboration with NASA in the International Space Station, and recently with the, the Italian Space Agency contract uh, that will bring our technology to the moon. Mm, with our uh, GNSS simulator, uh, we plan to create an innovative service uh, for automated GNSS vulnerability assessment of uh, receiver. And uh, we are also pushing the boundaries uh, of uh, interference monitoring, characterization, and geolocation. Uh, and we have just uh, launched uh, a new RF sensor, which is capable also to detect uh, advanced spoofing. So in summary, we are an Italian industry with a European footprint, and uh, we look forward to collaborating worldwide for the research and development of more secure GNSS uh, solutions. Uh, I really hope that uh, uh, with this webinar and through the experience uh, of the patrol team, the participant will get an additional information on how Galileo or SNMEA can be used to increase uh, the overall security of uh, GNSS applications. Uh, and I really would like to thank you, USPA, for the opportunity granted to Quascom to coordinate this project, and particularly to Flavius Bardellati that has guided us in uh, its role of project officer. So uh, thank you also to all the participants of this uh, webinar for the interest you are demonstrating. Uh, enjoy it, and uh, I give the word back to you, Richard. Thank you, Alessandro, for that fine introduction. I'd like to introduce today's uh, webinar moderator, Mr. Alan Cameron. He's the editor-in-chief of Inside GNSS Magazine and the PNT editor for Inside Unmanned Systems. He's covered the GNSS, PNT, and autonomous industries as both writer, editor, uh, and thought leader since 2000, focusing on technical issues around continuous, reliable positioning navigation. Alan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Richard. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to our audience around the world. It's always heartening to see such international attendance and interest in this topic. And this, uh, we are all attending an historic event, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the unveiling, although there are several unveilings, I must, I must admit, we can't take full credit. But this is the unveiling and unveiling of GNSS signal authentication. Uh, this has not been available before. It is not available anywhere else, but Galileo has implemented it and it is going forward. And this will be an extremely important area for 
uh, industry, for transportation and safety, and many others. Uh, we're privileged to, to bring this information to you. Uh, you can see there the four speakers who are going to uh, give you their various viewpoints. They've all been involved with uh, OSNMA, the Galileo Open Service Navigation Message Authentication in different ways and they will give you their varying perspectives and by the end of this webinar you'll have a very complete picture. So I will get to them in uh, individually in in just a few moments but right now Lori let's first hear from the audience. Yes let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the screen a our first poll question for the day. Uh, how important is GNSS authentication to your PNT application? If you wouldn't mind selecting one of the following, not important, somewhat important, very important, of critical importance, or don't know. So it looks like 0% uh, coming in with not important, 22% somewhat, 51% very important, 17% of critical importance, and 10% coming in with don't know. Uh, Alan, any thoughts here? Well, this is... Uh heartening, I guess, uh, or or as expected, I should say, because half of our audience uh, knows that uh, or, or is in an area that uh, signal authentication will be uh, extremely important and another good chunk, about a fifth uh, of critical importance. The, the people who don't know are about to learn something very important to them and uh, Again, we are privileged to bring this information to you. Uh, we are going to hear first from Flavio Spardellate, who is the Market Development Technology Officer at the European Union Agency for the Space Program. Flavio is responsible for integrating users and applications benefiting from secure and trustable USPA services in the field of navigation and satellite communications. His previous background includes work as a systems engineer and project manager at Northrop Grumman and H3G Ericsson in the UK. Flavio, please proceed. Thank you, Alan. And good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone who is connected today. It's my pleasure being here today, joining this webinar, whose purpose uh, is actually to share the main findings of a very interesting and important, I would say, USPA-funded project, uh, which is named Patrol. Now, in doing so, I will start by uh, explaining what, uh, uh, what is the main distinguishing Genesis functionality exploited by the Patrol solution, which is uh, offered by the Galileo program. Well, uh, let me start with some basic considerations, uh, which might be obvious for some participants. Uh, but overall, uh, it is well known that uh, any GNSS uh, is, in principle, vulnerable to certain threats. And these threats uh, are typically in the form of spoofing and uh, jamming. And unfortunately, those events are growing over time and uh, can cause problems to each of us. This is particularly unpleasant because uh, several applications today heavily rely on GNSS. Uh, we have some obvious examples. Let me take the example of uh, many applications which run on the smartphone of each of us pocket, uh, rather than uh, the car navigation systems of our vehicles that, drive, that we drive on a daily basis. But there are also some other less obvious uh, uses of GNSS uh, whose actual disruption might either directly or even indirectly create problem to any of us. So that is the case, for instance, of Genesis timing used to synchronize bank transaction or to synchronize mobile base stations. It is the case of uh, Genesis PVT used to support uh, transport automation, meaning vehicles, drones, vessels, uh, and even machinery uh, in farming operations. So all, all in all, this is to say that uh, several businesses today actually rely on this technology, on GNSS, and the disruption of GNSS uh, might have a strong impact on the economy and on the society. Now, spoofing, uh, uh, as we all know, is about the degeneration and transmission of uh, non-genuine, let's say, counterfeit GNSS signal. And uh, this is not always, but typically uh, done for the purpose of obtaining uh, certain benefit. Now, authentication, Genesis authentication, is a mean to detect those spoofing events. And in order to protect the Genesis signal, both its data and range component should be authenticated. 
And in that respect, the Galileo program decided to make a first step forward with the aim to increase the level of resilience of its open service, meaning service for all Galileo users on a worldwide basis and completely for free by designing the Galileo open service navigation message authentication, Galileo OS NMA. And the purpose of Galileo SNMA is indeed to protect the data component in the form of its broadcast navigation message. OSNMA relies on the transmission of uh, certain cryptographic information in previously reserved bits in the INAF message transmitted on the E1B signal component. So on the very first uh, signal of Galileo, which is typically accessible to any, rece any Galileo receiver, and uh, any receiver uh, which, which should be enabled with the OSNMA algorithm will actually be able to benefit from this capability. And conversely, the other receiver will not be able to enjoy to somehow to benefit from this capability, but they will never, they will neither be uh, kind of degraded. So they will not experience any degradation of the service. Now, uh, that being said, uh, the reason why the Galileo program actually decided to invest in this capability and provide the first open GNSS authentication capability is because many market domains, and in particular many applications pertaining uh, several market domains, actually require a certain level of resilience for the users. At USPA, we have thoroughly analyzed the Genesis market, and we have identified several applications for which authentication is particularly relevant. Uh, furthermore, most of these applications are also being implemented and tested in operational scenario by means of a number of R&D projects that are funded by USPA uh, R&D instruments, uh, namely uh, the Fundamental Elements Program, which aims at developing uh, receivers and terminals, exploiting uh, GNSS capability and exploiting Galileo and Degnos capabilities, as well as Horizon 2020, which from this year uh, became Horizon Europe. Now, this is the reason why next to the pictures in this slide in the next one, you see some logos with project names. These are some examples of projects that we have been running, we have been managing with the aim to somehow uh, experience and assess the benefit of OSNMA in specific use cases. Now, that being said, without having the ambition to actually capture, capture the full market needs uh, and without having the ambition to be exhaustive in that respect, I have picked some concrete examples in this and the next slides to share some, some uh, ideas with you, some food for thoughts. So first of all, uh, it is well known that uh, more and more uh, transport platforms rely on GNSS positioning and timing information. When it comes to navigation, and in particular safety critical navigation, integrity is certainly key in nominal conditions, but is becoming more and more not sufficient, especially if the platform is exposed to uh, spoofing threats. And therefore, resilience to spoofing becomes of utmost importance. In the same way, uh, monitoring of drones as well as, well as uh, monitoring of uh, vessel traffic uh, needs a certain level of protection. And all in all, this is particularly true when the end user is non-collaborative. So when the end user has certain interest in deceiving the position of the timing information. And here a typical example is the case of monitoring of fishing activities. Uh, in case of fishing vessels, uh, they are typically monitored to verify where and how long they fish in certain areas. And the user uh, is expected to report the position while he might have some interest in uh, you know, deceiving the monitoring system. These are just uh, some, uh, some examples, uh, but uh, we consider that they are somehow representative. Uh, changing a bit the domain, but still remaining in, uh, in a kind of transport area, uh, the growing trend of automation is very exciting, this we all know, and has opened a new era, not only for transport, but also for, for other kind of uh, uses. For instance, for robotics, uh, but even for uh, other uh, kind of less obvious uh, applications like uh, farming logistics uh, and tractor steering. Now, however, uh, automation uh, also brings many concerns. And when it comes to the reliability of the platform, in terms of the ability of the platform to somehow have a certain situational awareness, it is particularly uh, critical. So where the vehicle is with respect to the surrounding infrastructure, how far a vehicle is from other vehicles or from pedestrians, and what is overall the level of confidence of the information. 
This is key for these kind of applications. And this is typically uh, and generally the result of a combination of multiple sensors. And the overall, the confidence level of the, of the final solution is function of the, of the reliability of each of them, including the Genesis component. And clearly, when the safety is concerned, the user of new technology has to also somehow take into consideration some other facts. For instance, uh, there are specific uh, standardization and certification constraints which apply to safety critical application. Therefore, for sure, these uh, will have a role in the, in the uptake of Genesis authentication, which might require some time. Nevertheless, at USPA, we have been managing several projects in this domain, which are demonstrating a clear benefit from technical viewpoint when it comes to exploiting Genesis authentication in automated use cases. Another example uh, is the use of Genesis timing to synchronize uh, telecom network or other type of networks, where even a short-term disruption of the service uh, or even a degradation of the quality of the service uh, might, have, uh, might affect uh, several people. And the last but not least, uh, we get to the mass market consumer grade solutions that are typically accessible through smartphones, through wearables, or through other portable devices, where actually all this started. Indeed, uh, surprisingly, as uh, probably most of you know, uh, one of the first self-spoofing attacks uh, was actually performed to deceive a well-known gaming application. Nevertheless, nevertheless, mass market applications not, no, are not always uh, about leisure applications, not only about gaming. Um, more and more, uh, the kind of uh, mass market applications relying on GNSS uh, are also entering a bit more into a domain, into a ground uh, where economic liability is concerned. And here I'm referring to cases like mobile payments, uh, like uh, geomarketing and advertising solutions, uh, insurance telematics, uh, or anti-theft systems. And all those uh, applications, being uh, kind of an economic factor typically concerned, are exposed to possible fraud. Again, uh, these are just few examples of possible target market uh, which will benefit from authentication in general and uh, might also benefit from Western in particular. However, uh, the Genesis authentication market, let's say, thanks to Galileo, uh, it's uh, somehow for non-governmental use, of course, uh, is uh, a quite new concept. And we will see how the market will actually react and we will see which additional use cases will materialize. What is certain in this respect is that uh, a consortium of leading European organization decided to join forces to prove the benefit of OSNMA, having in mind a very specific objective. And this team that you see here depicted in the bottom of the slide uh, is composed of Quascom, that is the uh, project coordinator and also sponsor of today's uh, webinar, uh, FTC, ST Microelectronics, GMV, Actia, and uh, the University of Padua. And uh, together, they developed a close-to-market Genesis terminal equipped with OSNMA uh, to be fitted in smart agraph onboard units. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with, uh, those, with this concept, the smart agraph is an application which is regulated in Europe uh, that aims at monitoring the driving and resting times of the truck drivers in order to increase the, the safety on the roads. And the Smartagraph unit typically records the time and the position at the beginning and at the end of the drive, and uh, periodically every three hours. And in case an abnormal event is detected, it is recorded in the unit, and it is returned to the law enforcers at the next control. Well, the role of OSNMA in this specific implementation is to contribute and to enhance the detec this detection mechanism. So it's a very important uh, functionality, which has been exploited, demonstrated, and integrated in a close-to-market uh, solution, uh, integrating a close-to-market uh, important product by ST Microelectronics, which is the TCO5. Now, the terminal was uh, tested against a number of scenarios, uh, some of them in nominal conditions, and some others under attacks, under spoofing attack, and the results uh, are very, very positive. Uh, I will not say more about it because the next speakers will go very much in detail and they will uh, share the project findings. So finally, uh, a few words about uh, where we are with the OSNMA service and what the next steps are. So let me start with a bit of history. 
all started in 2017 when the legislative act was actually adopted to implement the West CNMA service in the in the Galileo portfolio. Uh, roughly one year ago, on the 18th of November 2020, the program started broadcasting West CNMA data through Sigma in the space. And this allowed to compute the very first Galileo open service fix with authenticated data. Uh, since then, so in the last uh, 12 months, we have been performing internal tests to verify the readiness of the service and move to the launch of uh, the, the public um, uh, testing campaign. And indeed, uh, we are almost ready for it. Uh, as the public testing, uh, and this is the big news uh, I want to share with you, the public testing uh, will be launched by the end of, the, of this year. I would say even earlier than this. So really, it's, it's coming very, very soon. Stay, stay uh, be ready. And uh, uh, we hope that uh, you will all join this uh, possibility, this, this uh, public testing capability, because it's a very important milestone for the program. And it will be a very important uh, capability for all users uh, in, uh, in the, in the, um, on a worldwide basis. Now, this uh, public testing campaign uh, will be really public, and it will be really open. It will be open to everyone from industry, research institutes, users, and any other interested stakeholders. The launch of this public test will pass through three steps. First of all, uh, step one, which uh, I'm happy to say that uh, we accomplished today. Today, we have just published an information note uh, on Galileo SNMA which actually provides a comprehensive set of information, including a general characterization of the service, uh, many details on possible target markets, much more in detail than what I did today. And uh, it also includes a roadmap for the service rollout, and it explains the service documentation. So what, the doc what are the documents which actually regulate the service in terms of technical baseline? And finally, it also includes a summary of the most relevant research and development activity that uh, the European Commission and the USPA have been uh, somehow working on and which allowed to build uh, OSNMA prototypes. A second step, uh, which will come very soon, uh, will be the publication of a service notice, uh, which will provide detailed information in terms of the exact date when the public testing will start. And the last step will be uh, indeed the, 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 the publication of the full documentation. So all the documents uh, that uh, characterize the service will be published on the European GNSS Service Center, uh, gsc-europa.eu. And um, this uh, full documentation package will include the interface control document uh, for the test phase. It will include a document uh, which will explain exactly how to implement the OSNMA algorithm within the receiver, which is called the receiver guidelines for OSNMA implementation. And finally, it will also com be complemented by a presentation uh, which will uh, provide a kind of uh, element of typical performance that you can expect during the testing phase. Now, uh, it is important to remind that uh, um, this uh, will come together with uh, a form on this website, uh, which uh, for all interested, interested party uh, will be open for registration. So all those who will register through this form uh, will get access to the cryptographic material, which is needed to access the test service. Now, uh, you will understand very soon uh, what this uh, cryptographic material is about, uh, what is actually needed uh, to access the, the West NMA uh, testing. And uh, this will be explained in detail by the, by the speaker that will come, uh, in, will come in a while. Now, very important to recall is that all these three steps, starting from the one that uh, we already accomplished today, will take place very, very soon. And uh, so please, really stay tuned and be ready to catch this opportunity. So in summary, uh, Western Emitter Signal is coming. Be ready. Please register as soon as possible to the European GNSS Service Center website, again, gsc-europa.eu. Uh, if you register, uh, you will be notified uh, through a newsletter about the next steps. And uh, as soon as the uh, public testing will be open, you will have the possibility to also register for the testing phase. You will have access to the cryptographic material, to the public key and to all the documentation that you need to implement this capability and finally to test it. 
Last step, very important for us, please test it and share your feedback with us because we really uh, want to understand what is your uh, kind of, uh, what, you, what your, your opinion, what is your uh, level of satisfaction with the service and uh, should you have any recommendation, any feedback for us, we are more than happy to hear you. Now with this, I conclude my presentation. Uh, but before passing the floor to the next speaker, I would like to remind that uh, uh, arriving to this uh, um, testing of SNMA was a very long and demanding path, and it required uh, a joint effort by many Galileo program entities. And obviously, the European Commission, which is the program manager, uh, the Joint Research Center, USP, of course, and also the European Space, uh, the European Space Agency, ESA. So thank you very much, and uh, back to you, Alan. Thank you, Flavio. Now that we understand the, the rationale, the why for a signal authentication and the overall framework for its implementation, we're going to start taking uh, the first of several steps deeper into the technology of the signal. And uh, the first one will be courtesy of uh, Professor Gonzalo Seco Granados, who is a professor of electrical engineering at the Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona. Uh, he previously was a Fulbright Scholar at the University of California, Irvine, and a member of the technical staff in the RF Payload Division, European Space Research and Technology Center at the European Space Agency in Nordvik, uh, where he was involved in the Galileo project. He led the activities concerning navigation receivers and indoor positioning for GPS in Galileo. He's the author of a 2016 early technical paper on the Galileo navigation message authentication, and he's about to take us into the signal itself. Gonzalo, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Okay. Uh, let me emphasize what has been already said. Um, uh, Genesis positioning has been uh, it is a key technology in many applications, and this success uh, has also created the incentives to attack GNSS. The number of uh, attacks is numerous, and um, they vary from uh, attacks that uh, whose objective is to avoid is to prevent the user from computing the position using, for instance, some jamming or transmitting wrong data, to attacks whose objective is to induce a wrong position at the receiver. This attack consists on the transmission, for instance, of artificially generated signals, what is called spoofing, or the retransmission of signals uh, coming from the satellites what is called Mikonin, or a combination of both where a signal is artificially generated but includes uh, some, asp so, so, some parameters, some data that has been estimated from the signal in space, what are these called the scare or the estimation and replay attacks. Fortunately, there are also a large number of countermeasures against these attacks. Some of these countermeasures can be included, can be implemented in the receiver. So the receiver can include techniques uh, for uh, doing consistency checks between the observables. Also, receivers can incorporate uh, or use several antennas to estimate the direction of arrival of the signals, or can make use of uh, additional sensors. Also, it's possible to complement GNSS with alternative uh, complementary systems, uh, positioning systems that rely on terrestrial signals like 5G signals, Wi-Fi signals, or even from new constellations, uh, such as LEO constellations, which are attracting uh, significant interest nowadays. But GNSS itself, uh, they, uh, themselves, they also include uh, uh, some protection against um, attacks. One is simply the presence of signals at multiple frequencies that can be used to compute positions in many different ways and to double check positions uh, computing uh, different bands. There are several GNSS uh, systems. So now receivers can use several constellations, GNSS, uh, like GPS, Galileo, Beidou, GLONASS, etc. And 
Finally, GNSS can also include some cryptographic protection in the form of encryption and authentication of some components uh, of the signal. And this is what uh, the, the, the central topic of today. In the end, the, 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 the ultimate objective of all these countermeasures is to authenticate the PVT. So to have a PVT that uh, we have the assurance that is computed with authentic signals. This is a very challenging objective and probably it cannot be achieved with a single uh, technique, at least at a reasonable cost. This is, but, but this doesn't mean that each individual technique is not valuable. Probably the way to see this approach is that this very challenging objective can be approached by concatenating different layers of protection where each layer, even if it's not uh, perfect, it has some holes, when you put all of them together, you can block uh, all the attacks all the risk or most of them and really approach this objective of uh, authenticating uh, the PVT. So every uh, opportunity that we have or every each idea, any idea that we have to put an additional layer of protection, it's a great contributor to our all objective of making GNSS more resilient. And one of these opportunities appear what was present in the Galileo signal. This opportunity was in the form of 40 bits that were reserved, well, that were not used, in the ENAF page, the signal, the, 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 the data that is transmitted in the U1B signal. These 40 bits are transmitted every two seconds, so this represents a data rate of 20 bits per second that can be used to add authentication to the Galileo signal. It may seem that it's a low rate, but nevertheless one has to consider that uh, this rate is, uh, th this, uh, this capacity is available in all the satellites, and there are many satellites, and also the message to be authenticated is transmitted at a low rate and doesn't change uh, uh, very frequently. At this point also it's worth reminding that uh, a navigation signal consists of several components. Probably the ma two main components are the data and the spreading code. Here we are talking about data authentication. On top of this, one can also consider solutions or uh, approaches to authenticate or uh, encrypt the spreading code. That will be complementary to the, 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 what we are discussing here uh, today. Okay, uh, then uh, the, 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 opportun the, 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 the challenge is to include this, uh, how to authentication in this field of the, of the Galileo signal. Uh, and this implies authenticating a broadcast channel because we all know that each signal, each satellite transmits a signal that is received by a huge number of receivers and there is no return channel from the receivers to the satellite. And also the spoofer can be like any other receiver, so we have to devise a method that can be exploited by the receivers to authenticate the signal, but cannot be exploited by the spoofers, which are also receivers, to generate fake signals. Uh, and also we have to take into account in when designing an authentication scheme for, for Galileo, for such a system, that the available data rate is low. So an efficient uh, authentication approach uh, has to be proposed. Uh, the standard approach to authenticate a broadcast channel is the use of asymmetric cryptography. This means the use of private and public keys together with digital signatures. The drawback of asymmetric cryptography is, uh, is that it's not very efficient. Large amounts of data need to be transmitted. And this would, this would not be a good idea for Galileo because it would make difficult to receive all the necessary data in channels where 
the bit error rate can be compromised, like in urban channels, for instance. And maybe the authentication could fade too often. The solution was to uh, uh, put together an inner layer of symmetric cryptography, which is much more efficient, with an outer layer of asymmetric authentication, which is absolutely necessary at some point in a system that is asymmetric, like this one, because the satellites transmit and the receivers receive. There is no uh, two-way transmission. And these two layers of cryptography uh, is what uh, was already existing and then was adapted for Galileo and it's the Tesla protocol. The Tesla protocol uses mainly symmetric cryptography but with the particularity that the keys, the private keys used, used for this symmetric cryptography are disclosed with some delay so that uh, when it's the, 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 the spoofers they don't have this key at the right time where they could exploit it. Uh, this also includes, uh, this also implies some restrictions that means that that consists in that the receivers uh, have to be roughly or loosely synchronized with the transmitters. So some loose time synchronization is needed in the receivers. Okay, uh, how is the Tesla protocol implemented in Galileo? Well, the key and in Galileo and also the core of the Tesla protocol is that the transmission order of the keys is the opposite to the generation order of the of, of the keys. Everything starts with a seed key that is known by the system and it's never transmitted. And then the system generates with a one-way function from left to right a sequence of keys up to a, up to a uh, after a final key, which is called a root key. This root key actually is the initial point of the transmission of the keys that goes from left to right. All the keys that we have in the middle, they are transmitted and they are called Tesla keys and these are the private keys that the protocol uses to authenticate the message. Um, the Tesla keys, once a Tesla key is received, the, the receiver can check its authenticity by rebuilding part of this generation chain because it can go from the key to the root key and check the consistency between the Tesla key and the root key. The root key actually has to be transmitted and need to be has to be authenticated and this is done with a digital signature which is generated by the private key only known by the system and the receiver checks the authenticity with a public key. This public key is the one that implements this uh, outer layer of asymmetric cryptography that we mentioned. The public key is provided via the signal in space or also accessing uh, in a much faster way than the signal in space, accessing a server or a database provided by the Galileo system. Uh, all this information has to be embedded in the 40 bits that we mentioned in the navigation message. These 40 bits are divided in 8 bits for the transmission of the root key and the digital signature mainly and some of uh, and sporadically for the transmission of the public key. And most of the bits, actually 32 of them, are devoted to the transmission of the message authentication codes, MAX, and the Tesla keys. Okay. Um, the, the, the transmission sequence and the processing logic of OSNMA are described here. On the left, we have the transmission order, and on the right-hand side, the processing logic, which in some parts is follows the opposite order. So the transmission goes as follows. First, the receiver needs a public key. Then second needs a root key, which has the, uh, which a digital signature. With, uh, with the public key, the receiver can check the authenticity of the root key. And then uh, at this point, it can start the uh, periodic authentication of the navigation message, where the navigation message is received followed by a, uh, MAC, uh, by a message authentication code and then at the end 
uh, in, the, in, in the last item that the receiver receives is uh, the Tesla key. And this process of three, four, and five, three, four, and five are repeated uh, yes, periodically um, in the operation. Uh, the authentication actually starts, uh, or one cycle of this authentication starts when the last element is received, when the Tesla key is received. Then the receiver checks the, the authenticity of the Tesla key, making sure that it's consistent with the root key. And then if the Tesla key is correct, the receiver can generate the message authentication code corresponding to the navigation message or parts of the navigation message, message because there are different configurations. And then the receiver checks that the computed uh, message authentication code is the same as the message authentication code in the signal. If they coincide, this is an indication that the message was authentic. Uh, a prerequisite for this to work is that the receiver uh, has to make sure that the Tesla key is not received too late. This means that it has to have some loose synchronization. The receiver has to make sure that is not processing the Tesla key, a Tesla key from the past that could have been used by a spoofer to generate all the cryptographic information in a fake way. So it has to make sure that the Tesla key is arri arrives with some, some margin, but in the right moment. And here, uh, well, uh, OSNMA is a data level cryptography protocol. There's no doubt about that. It's something that is embedded in the data and actually in the formation bits to authenticate those information bits. But the one has to also take into account that this, in the, eventually this goes into a signal. And these information bits are code, interleaved, and modulated, resulting, resulting in symbols that modulate the amplitude of a, an electromagnetic signal. The unpredictability of the uh, cryptographic information also introduces some unpredictability in the amplitude of the signal, so in the symbols. So this data level in, uh, cryptography also has some, let's say, uh, effect at signal level. And this effect can be exploited because we have uh, spread spectrum signals, the sampling rate is high, and then we, we have several samples in each of the symbols. If a spoofer, for instance, tries to implement an estimation and replay attack, it will have to estimate some of the unpredictable parts of the signal, and this will lift a footprint on the signal, because the initial part of the symbols may, have diff may be different to the final part of the symbols. And this level of distortion in the signal, which is induced by cryptography at that level, can be observed and actually has been exploited in patrol, as we will see uh, later in some of uh, the results, and uh, has been proven that uh, it's also an, yeah, an, a, a powerful uh, uh, way to exploit OSNMA. This means that OSNMA uh, can open further research uh, opportunities beyond the pure data level cryptography, and this anti-replay capabilities, it's only an example. There are open research problems that can be tackled, like um, how OSNMA can be used in a snapshot or duty cycle receivers, how uh, authentication can be done uh, in, a, in a remote server, or vice versa, how a receiver can take advantage of assistance information sent by a, by a server. Also, how OSNMA can be uh, combined with other uh, cryptographic protections that are planned for the, in the Galileo signal, like the encryption of the codes in the E6C component. Well, uh, this has been a very high level. Uh, as Fabio has said, I think many, th many, many, many things are going to start now in uh, related to SNMA, also the possibility to test it. And there will be a webinar where more details and more in-depth explanation of SNMA will be provided on November 13 on 
these links where you can register if you want. So that's everything. I give the word back to you, Alan. Thank you, Gonzalo. I think I speak for many in the audience with a question on the tip of my tongue uh, for you. Will OSNMA affect the accuracy achievable with Galileo and also the time to first fix? No, this is one of the advantages of uh, OSNMA. It's something that comes on top of the normal service and has no effect on the accuracy of um, of, uh, of Galileo. And uh, uh, because uh, a receiver can keep using Galileo at the E1B signal as normally does, but has the option to also authenticate uh, the message. If the receiver only wants to use the authenticated messages, there could be, in theory, a small impact on the accuracy because maybe at some points it cannot compute the position. But experiments have shown that this impact doesn't exist. The reason being that uh, the amount of data needed to authenticate, to authenticate the message is much smaller than the message itself. So it's very unlikely that a receiver uh, can have good uh, conditions to receive the message but bad conditions to receive the authentication. So in short, if the receiver receives the message, can also receive the authentication and then it can use it if the receiver wants. And the time to first fix uh, is not affected because uh, as we said, this is an additional feature so the receiver can compute the position normally. What may come a bit later uh, in the order of few minutes later is the first authenticated fix because the, to claim that a fix has been authenticated the receiver has to have authenticated the message and then this it needs an additional time uh, for this but the first positions can be computed as quickly as now I hope this answered your question Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Flavio, I'd like to call you back to the virtual microphone for a question. Uh, in view of the upcoming public observation phase, is there any receiver or are there any receivers already enabled with Galileo OS NMA capability in the marketplace? Well, Alan, uh, the answer I would say that is yes, but is yes with the caveat. So USPA has been uh, funding the development of high TRL GNSS receivers and uh, some of those receivers actually integrate the OSNME algorithm. However, they did it on the basis of technical specification uh, that was available to the industry in a specific point in time, which means that uh, once the final specification for testing will be made available, as we said very soon, when the public opening will be will be announced, they will have to somehow update the solution to align to this uh, latest specification. But in any case, we expect that this will not take uh, take a long time. And we have a concrete example here because Patrol is an example of a WestNME enabled terminal, which exploit this capability. And this capability is actually implemented in a STM electronics receiver, which is the TSI, the TSO5. So I would say that the answer is uh, yes with this uh, clarification. Now, if uh, if you have uh, interest to know more about the receivers that are available, I really invite all the participants to take a look at the OSNMA info note, which provides a long list of uh, prototypes which actually implement this, uh, this uh, functionality. Thank you. And, and yes, we'll hear more about the ST Microelectronics Tesio. Uh, OSNMA capability a little bit later on in our program here. Right now, Lori, we have a question for our audience. In fact, we do. And uh, coming up on the screen is that question. How serious are the threats for a denial of service attack or deception of service attack in your PNT application? Choices, as you see there on the screen, not serious, somewhat serious, very serious, critical, or unknown? It looks like 4% not serious, 28% somewhat serious, 37% very serious, 23% critical, 9% coming in with unknown. So um, thank you for sharing those thoughts. And we're going to go ahead, pass it back to Alan to introduce our next presenter. Yes, we'll hear now from Dr. Giovanni, head of SIGINT and EW division at Quascom. 
Giovanni received his PhD in telecommunication engineering from the University of Padova, and he had a postdoc fellowship for the Italian National Research Council, working on interference detection and mitigation in industrial applications. He joined Quascom in 2014, serving as R&D specialist and project manager for different EC, GSA, and ESA projects, and industry-funded projects as well, all related to interference detection, mitigation, geolocation, and to GNSS anti-spoofing design and GNSS robustness assessment. He is the patrol project manager and anti-spoofing specialist since the beginning of the project. Giovanni, the floor is yours. Thanks, Alan, for the introduction, and thank you all for joining us today. Well, I would like to spend some words about the context of the smart tachograph, uh, even if Flavio already introduced it. Uh, the smart tachograph is an improved version of the digital tachograph, uh, that is a device used uh, to monitor truck drivers' activities and increase road safety. Uh, the smart tachograph introduced some important improvements, uh, and this is, uh, for instance, GNSS. Uh, this is used to improve uh, uh, the PVT and to provide capability to detect motion anomalies. Uh, the smart tachograph regulation, uh, in force since uh, 2019, uh, mandates uh, the use of Galileo SNMA authentication uh, as soon as it will be available. And this basically adds a new layer of resiliency and security to this application. Patrol is a used by procurement and that is funded via fundamental elements program, as uh, Flavio introduced before, and it has a primary uh, object, the provision of the first OSMA enabled close to market user terminal that will be completely compliant with smart software regulation. The user terminal uh, that has been designed and manufactured by FDC is based on TZ5 receiver, uh, that is uh, the core technology provided by S3 Micro. And uh, it also includes a state-of-the-art anti-spoofing techniques complementary to OSMA um, provided by Quascom, FDC, and ST Microelectronics. Patrol delivered also a comprehensive validation platform that is uh, um, basically used to stimulate the user terminal and to assess GNSS vulnerabilities with and without the OSNMA. This even before OSNMA was available uh, in the signaling space. Uh, in fact, it includes uh, state-of-the-art simulation tools such as uh, GNSS simulators, OSNMA synthetic data generator, and uh, really a, a set of analysis and reporting tools uh, as you can see in the picture. Patrol experimentation covered a number of relevant scenarios defined together with UNIPD, UNIPD, that is University of Padova, via complete threat assessment phase. Scenarios span from nominal ones to under attack scenarios. And one of the points is that nominal scenarios are not only tested in simulated environment, but also with uh, basically a realistic uh, signaling space. And also, we have that uh, um, we have that uh, while under attack scenarios cover meconing, simplistic, advanced spoofing, we can also generate uh, scare uh, scare attacks, as uh, described by by Gonzalo before, and also as a made denial of service. As you can see in the picture here, uh, we have a number of anti spoofing techniques. Uh, there are really uh, covering uh, different layers to provide different layers of protection. So, for instance, we have uh, AGC monitoring, signal quality monitoring, post correlation, observable consistency checks, multi frequency, multi constellation checks, and also cross consistency with uh, external RTC, with the uh, external INS, uh, SCAR detectors. This is uh, really a, a, a first implementation of this SCAR detector capability in a mass market receiver. And overall, we have a, a, a machine learning anti-spoofing capability that is able to merge all the others. Patrol supported the program, as uh, Flavio um, introduced before, um, as one of the initiatives participating to the signaling space testing phase. 
The experimentation campaign was performed by GMV and covering uh, really a variety of scenarios near their facilities. Um, the tests covered nominal scenarios in open sky, uh, suburban, urban environments, and also under attack scenarios. A number of different OSNMA configurations have been tested, including key management events. Well, this lab is particularly important because uh, it really provides us uh, a glance. It provides just an overview of the test results, but uh, uh, here we can see that the OSNMA data dissemination coverage in open sky and urban environment is uh, uh, really um, providing us uh, interesting results. You see on the right open sky um, performance, on the left urban performance. Uh, this KPI means that the, uh, it's basically the percentage of time when OSNMA data is received via a certain number of satellites. Uh, we can see, for instance, that the uh, dissemination via four satellites, that is the, the upper bar, uh, is lower in urban, and this is expected. But the important point we need to, to, to recall is that basically it is not needed to have a 100% availability of this KPI because uh, satellites can benefit from cross-authentication feature. In this slide, we can see really the cross-authentication in action. We see that uh, OSNMA and OS availability, uh, that is the percentage of time when at least four satellites are available, uh, is more or less similar in urban and uh, in open sky environment. This means that we are really capable, even in harsh environment, to provide, uh, to provide authentication features. Well, let me somehow summarize the performance we obtained during uh, this uh, uh, nominal uh, performance assessment phase. Uh, we can say that Patrol um, implemented the uh, uh, OSNMA enabled user terminal that uh, was definitely in line with expectations. Uh, the OSNMA availability uh, that we were able to, uh, to measure is very high in most of the scenarios. Galileo only performance are very good, especially in open sky, uh, while it is uh, somehow more challenging to, to have it at the same level for the graded scenarios. And here, cross-authentication feature and GPS cross-authentication can also help. Um, also, the observed cave management events are in line with the, the ICD, with the, the control document, and an improvement in the coding and processing has been observed along with the project evolution because uh, we improved the patrol user terminal and the final version really improved the performance. Here, I report basically some under attack results for completeness. Uh, we can see that they have been performed with really realistic environments. I mean, real signal in space plus a replay signal. Obviously, we merged the signal uh, with uh, uh, via cable to avoid the licensing problems. But uh, the important point I would like to stress is that, as you can see, the Mikuning is detected by the time monitoring and also by AGC and machine learning anti-spoofing. So a number of different uh, anti-spoofing uh, layers are capable of, uh, of triggering. And regarding OSMA, uh, past max are decoded uh, as expected, being a Mikuning attack. Here we have uh, also another interesting uh, uh, scenario, that is uh, a spoofing scenario. Um, for instance, on the right, you see a, a complex scenario having first nominal piece, then spoofing part, then a nominal again, and then a gem and mikoning part. Well, uh, you can see that in all the under attack phases, at least one or more um, anti-spoofing techniques triggers while complementing OSNMA capabilities. An important, another important point I would like to stress is that in realistic scenarios, the multi-frequency processing provided an inherent and robustness, somehow mitigating the effect of single frequency spoofing. And this is for sure uh, somehow expected, but important. Finally, you see on the right bottom, um, we have an example of the SCAR, on a SCAR scenarios, where our detector was Conceived, fully conceived in patrol and implemented in the Teseo was able to properly detect the attack. So if we come to some consideration to the service testing, well, we were able to prove 
the feasibility to implement our SNMA in a mass market receiver for a real application by using the OSNMA ICD as a guideline. The signal and space testing uh, phase uh, demonstrated that uh, authentication works well, as expected, basically. Uh, the ICD is a good guideline, even if uh, it is uh, somehow suggested that some further operational guidelines will come, but Flavio already assured that it, they will come soon. Um, we tested a number of uh, OSNMA configurations, and uh, but they should be fixed for the operational phase. We also saw that uh, GPS cross-authentication uh, is a powerful tool because uh, um, it supports basically the authentication navigation in Arch environment where availability of only Galileo can be a little bit problematic. Well, uh, some concluded remarks on the achievements we obtained with Patrol. Patrol delivered the first OSNMA enabled user terminal for smart tachograph applications. It is a, a field proven, mature solution equipped with state-of-the-art anti-spoofing, detection and mitigation features. Furthermore, the project delivered state-of-the-art validation platform providing, uh, let's say, capability to simulate uh, either signal space but also advanced spoofing threat generation and all kind of threats relevant to SNMA. An important point regarding Patrol is also the support we provided somehow to to the collaboration we had with USPA and the European Commission. Patrol uh, supported the SNMA consolidation experimentation during the signal and space uh, testing phase. It supported the standardization of uh, SNMA in uh, smart tachograph uh, regulation frameworks and uh, working groups. Patrol demonstrated that SNMA delivers uh, a clear added value to the smart tachograph application. Uh, SNMA confirms the authenticity of the GNSS navigation data, we know, but also OSNMA limits the need for custom anti-spoofing techniques and works well in synergy with other protection layers if they are available. So this is all on my side. Back to you, Alan. Thank you, Giovanni. <coughs> While we come to the concluding presentation in our webinar, where we will see OSNMA in action in a, an actual multi-band, multi-constellation receiver. And this is courtesy of Alessandro Chimenti, who is positioning marketing manager for the automotive product group at ST Microelectronics. He has a master's in electronics degree from the University of Palermo, and he started working at ST Microelectronics in 2004 as technical marketing for RFICs, short-range RF receivers, power amplifiers, low noise amplifiers for industrial applications. Since 2007, he has focused on GNSS products, the ST Micro Tezio family, for the automotive market, driving new products, specifications, and related promotion for customers. Alessandro. Hello, thank you, Alan. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks to be here and listen to uh, our webinar. I will go through, show you, which is uh, Teseo offer, uh, Teseo 5, uh, used the inside the patrol. I like that this ST Micro is inside Genesis world since uh, the uh, Genesis is born, since 90s. Uh, we are already in the seventh generation of products, uh, always with the mind to improve uh, uh, an accuracy to bring innovation. Uh, from Teseo 2, that has been uh, the first multi-constellation receiver, Teseo 3, bring uh, uh, BAID on top, uh, and now TCO5 uh, with multi-band, multi-frequency, multi-constellation receiver, as well as uh, uh, TCO PP, which is out ASIL precise positioning. Thanks to this wide offer in, in ST, we are able to address a wide market uh, uh, of application like uh, automotive, marine, uh, infrastructure, uh, and IoTs. The CO5, as I said, is a multi-frequency, multi-band position, positioning receiver. Uh, it uh, uh, is capable to deal with L1, L2, L5, and the 6 uh, frequency band. Also, thanks to the companion chip, it is called STA5635, which is an external RF front end. It is a, a very powerful uh, uh, 
uh, platform and we are able to uh, deliver a lot of uh, and address a lot of user cases uh, with different uh, software offer so he can uh, provide the raw data to enable uh, precise positioning algorithms uh, as well as uh, uh, standard positioning PVT, the, the reckoning uh, 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 and many other software features. I would like also to give you an insight of what we are going to to show it to present uh, sh shortly in the market which is uh, uh, the first uh, uh, single chip uh, uh, triple frequency receiver uh, it is a it will be a part of of the cell phone family uh, called the STA8135 GA uh, this will be a unique platform capable to do triple frequency in parallel so L1 L2 and L5 this go always in the in the way to increase uh, accuracy, to increase robustness against the jamming and uh, and against uh, uh, spoofing and multipath. So we think uh, really that uh, such uh, features uh, are really key for the Genesis market overall. Yes, as also said by our colleagues before. The CO5 is already in production, so it's a product that is not that is available uh, for the market. Uh, uh, it is considered by, a, 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 as I said, is a powerful uh, 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 platform thanks to the Cortex M7 and provide a lot of feature uh, on top of multi constellation differential uh, GPS. Uh, uh, assisted GNSS, uh, also with thanks with the partnership with the Rixen. Uh, uh, measurement data as well as PVT uh, and as a software offer we can offer binary uh, deliveries to any customer and SDK delivery to uh, software partner like uh, FDC and Qualcomm uh, in the patrol project and for sure we have worked a lot on anti-jamming and anti-spoofing uh, uh, argument is we do believe uh, it is uh, really important uh, uh, for the market. In this perspective, let me go deep uh, uh, in what we uh, have done uh, inside Patrol, uh, working uh, at the signal and data level to provide all the raw data, uh, all the um, uh, quality metrics uh, and also uh, integrity monitors uh, to uh, the application layer. So for instance uh, uh, we did uh, what we call uh, uh, anti-correlation uh, monitor, uh, uh, anti-correlation metrics that reports the correlation shape uh, with the help of additional monitor uh, channels for the detection of spoofing uh, or strong multipath uh, or uh, signal impairments affecting the shape uh, uh, of the correlation peak. We uh, do also uh, do a PVT consistency check thanks to the fact that the TCO5 is a multi-band, uh, multi-constellation uh, receiver. We can cross-check the PVT among different uh, uh, constellations. Let me say what the, uh, uh, Gonzalo uh, and Giovanni said before. Uh, this, uh, this word uh, needs a lot of uh, small pieces of uh, information. Uh, and we have uh, uh, developed a lot of these building blocks, uh, working really at uh, signal and data level. We do also uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, white band uh, jamming, uh, um, intermediate frequency monitor, or a narrow band uh, mo uh, jammer uh, monitor for the uh, continuous wave uh, monitor. So going deep also in what is the core technology that we have developed uh, uh, for Patrol. 
so SNMR uh, in the in the project is divided, I would say, into uh, main part. One is the core technology, uh, which deal of, of course of the second channel, uh, the the uh, the bits, the management of the uh, the signal, uh, and all the the building blocks that we, we discussed before about uh, uh, quality metrics. Uh, while there is also an applicative part uh, that uh, go in the direction to uh, configure uh, properly uh, the core technology. Uh, for instance, the uh, OSNMA can be uh, configured into uh, different modes. What we call uh, a consistency check, which basically um, configure the system to have uh, uh, the standard command filter, the standard positioning uh, uh, that uh, compute uh, all uh, the data coming from uh, any satellite, uh, any constellation, uh, and compare uh, the position uh, against uh, uh, the L1 PVT computed uh, uh, only uh, with uh, um, uh, authenticated uh, uh, message. Uh, if the, uh, the, the check uh, uh, go in the direction to be uh, small, so the difference is small, is, uh, is okay. If there is a, uh, above a certain threshold, uh, there is a rise of alarm uh, to the upper layer. The other mode is uh, what we call authenticated PVT. So the solution is uh, configured to manage only uh, authenticated message. In this way, uh, the upper layer can know is if the PVT that uh, is the output of the solution is an authenticated solution, or if automatically, uh, due to a lack of information, uh, it fall back uh, to a not authenticated uh, uh, one. Uh, this, I think, is an important uh, also feature that we add uh, to prevent uh, and to sustain uh, uh, the availability of, of the solution, even if, as Giovanni said, uh, uh, the cross uh, uh, authentication feature is a key point uh, for the system. As uh, as we as we saw before, uh, uh, the, the one of the most advanced uh, estimation replay type of, of uh, spoofing is uh, what uh, is called the uh, scare uh, that. Uh, um, uh, try to fake you know, the OSNMA uh, authentication data. Uh, so as Gonzalo was saying, we implemented the InterSeo 5 uh, uh, a metric that uh, is uh, capable to, uh, to uh, make a statistics accum accumulating the, the, the power uh, of the OSNMA bits uh, and compare the first milliseconds of such uh, uh, message, such bits, respect to the fourth uh, millisecond. Uh, making, and this is a comparison that is done uh, epoch by epoch. In this way, in a case where there is no attack, uh, the power of the two parts of the bits uh, have a similar uh, equivalent uh, uh, power level. In this case, uh, we can see that uh, along this test, uh, that was uh, 200 seconds, uh, each epoch reports uh, precisely uh, equivalent uh, uh, level power between the two uh, statistics. Uh, while in a in a event of a scare attack in that uh, right uh, uh, fi figure, you, you can see that the first uh, part of the bits, the, the first statistics, is uh, uh, as less power respect uh, the fourth one. This is because uh, the system of uh, estimation replay needs time to um, predict, I would say, the, uh, the bits. Uh, in this way, we are, can alert the, the, the system that is a possible scare, scare attack. Going deep uh, on what we did for uh, for SNMA, for sure, uh, uh, Patrol uh, was born with uh, uh, the goal uh, to demonstrate uh, uh, the technology in a specific uh, uh, market, which is uh, the, the smart tachograph one. 
for ST, the, the digital market, the digital tachograph market is, uh, is already a, an important uh, uh, market because we are there. The TSO3 is already in production uh, in key uh, player of this market. And we want to be there also, of course, uh, uh, in the future. And thanks to Patrol, uh, already uh, important customer, we have two ongoing projects uh, already. Uh, are, adopt, are adopting uh, our technology for the uh, to comply with the smart uh, tachograph uh, regulation. Uh, we uh, added on top of SNMA uh, in the offer for this market for sure another important uh, piece uh, uh, and another important feature of TSO5 which is uh, uh, what we call secure boot. So thanks to a secure uh, an hardware security macro uh, TSO5 uh, can, uh, in TSO5 we can enable uh, a secure uh, uh, boot process which allow to use uh, only authenticated uh, firmware on it. We see this market of uh, uh, the, the trucks, uh, I would say, uh, vehicle commercial quite stable uh, and quite uh, um, uh, interesting for this uh, application for sure. We did this uh, for, uh, for sure uh, together with our partner. So today in our uh, uh, offer uh, we uh, we provide uh, our software partner, our partner FDC with uh, what we call an SDK which is built uh, 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 on which we provide uh, uh, the building blocks, the measurement, positioning, uh, till to the SNMA, so the green uh, boxes, while they had on top uh, uh, their uh, uh, application layer uh, uh, firmware. Uh, of course, the OSNMA application, uh, security layer, uh, uh, and of course the digital uh, uh, protocol uh, uh, application. In the future, to catch uh, what uh, uh, Flavio was saying, you know, the, the, uh, to the wide availability of the, the system uh, that could be of interest, uh, not only of, of course of the digital tachograph, but uh, of uh, along, uh, I mean, I think uh, all the application, we wanted to bring uh, a, a light or cinema support uh, for any offer, uh, so in a binary format that they can go in any, at any customer. Let me say that thanks to FDC and to Patrol, we, the FDC was able to design a module, which is 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter, that to me is a quite uh, already a product, uh, at for sure is a, a ready reference design to whom I would leverage this uh, technology. So quite an impressive uh, uh, results of this project uh, that uh, really brings uh, already return from the, the market. So uh, really thanks uh, Flavio uh, and all the, uh, uh, the participants of the project to, uh, for this uh, really success story. So for me uh, it's all. Uh, thank you. Back to Alan then. Thank you. Thank you Alessandro. Uh, there are some resources there for the audience's information and you needn't be uh, too rapid with your pencil because you will get this slide uh, in, in email. But uh, while we're looking over those resources, I'm going to move right into the question period with, uh, with one for you, Flavio. Uh, you talked about the public observation phase. Uh, will this be accessible to any interested party? from users to companies and so forth. And uh, also, how can those interested parties take part in the testing campaign? How can they provide feedback and what for? Thank you for this uh, good question, Alan. Actually, I would say that, uh, yes, the answer is for sure, yes. The public testing will be accessible to everyone. Uh, just let me remind the process. So any interested party will have to register to the GSC website to uh, retrieve the cryptographic material, namely the public key, now that uh, was explained by, by the colleagues today. And uh, by this, they will be able to access the test. Let me also remind that this test will last for a pretty long time. 
because as we said uh, we are going to launch this year and it will stay open for uh, the whole uh, next year to target the service provision phase from 2023. And the final point, uh, we really appreciate any feedback from uh, testers, so feel free to provide any feedback through the GSC help desk and uh, be aware that your feedbacks uh, will be actually extremely useful for the program and they will be used either for a kind of quick fine tuning if time allows or they will be taken into account for a service evolution in the future. Thank you, Flavio. Uh, Ed, speaking of feedback, we have a feedback question for our audience that we'd like to uh, we'd like to hear from you. Yep, I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen, and maybe we want to ask another question while responses are coming in. Yep. So everybody, read the question and give us your answer. Meanwhile, Gonzalo, I have a question for you. Which okay. is the level of time synchronization needed in the receiver? to use OSNMA? Yes. Uh, th this will depend on the, on, the, on the configuration of the OSNMA, the final parameters that are used in the OSNMA uh, protocol. But roughly, uh, what can be expected is that in the nominal operation of OSNMA, uh, the receiver will need an accuracy of the time around 30, se 30 seconds. 30 seconds and if the receiver doesn't have this uh, this synchronization it can also use OSNMA but it will have to use another type of information that will be in the protocol as well and in that case the startup will be slower but the receiver can have uh, only uh, only needs a synchronization on the order of 300 seconds so five minutes so you can see that this quite loose because in the normal operation is 30 seconds and in the let's say uh, backup mode uh, is five minutes around five minutes I would say wonderful wonderful Lori how's that poll progressing I think we're doing just fine I'll go ahead and put the responses up on the screen and uh, there you have it any thoughts and we here? can see that autonomy is autonomy is the key word. Uh, nearly everyone has opted for. It, we allow you to select two. Has opted for UAS navigation uh, or, or and or autonomous vehicles. Uh, returning to our panel with questions, Giovanni, uh, what is the overall level of protection achieved by the petrol? Uh, user terminal against state-of-the-art attacks to GNSS. Well, thanks, thanks, Alan, for this question. Actually, I would say that really the level of protection we can achieve with Patrol is very is very high because in the end, uh, as you probably remember before, I, I introduced something. Uh, uh, if we go back to the idea of slices, successive slices of uh, of uh, protection, really we are targeting a number of protection layers. Uh, I would say that the only missing one is uh, uh, at the antenna level, but this is outside, let's say, the use, the, the, um, use case of uh, patrol. All the other layers are covered. So uh, either if we are targeting jamming, if we are targeting spoofing, even very, very aligned spoofing, so sophisticated one, miconing, the scare attack, I guess, really is the the, the, the first uh, implementation of uh, with the scare detector. So what I can say is really, I think uh, the overall le level is very high. I hope Thank to, you. to have answered. Yeah. 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 Very good, uh, Alessandro. Uh, since we had such a high interest, uh, eighty-one percent autonomous vehicles in the audience uh, be interested in in uh, using it. Uh, can OSNMA uh, be a feature requested on uh, autonomous car application? Uh, th thank you, um, uh, for for the question. Obviously, out I can say no after the pull question. No, oh, eighty percent of the, our audience are uh, guessing these, and for sure uh, I can confirm what uh, we, we we said all uh, uh, during the webinar that uh, OSNMA is for sure uh, a key. A feature that uh, is added uh, together with the other uh, anti-spoofing mechanism. So for sure, uh, we cannot think about it uh, uh, 
as a unique uh, anti-spoofing mechanism, but as a layer of a cheese of layer as a Gon in Gonzalo presentation uh, to to protect uh, the the users uh, uh, of the position uh, against uh, uh, threats outside threats. So for sure, for sure, yes. For sure, yes. Well, that's good <laughs> because there's a lot of interest in that sector. Uh, Gonzalo, uh, someone wants to know how long does it take to have the first authenticated PBT? Okay, yes. Uh, again, the, the answer uh, is that it depends. It depends on many things, but mainly it depends on the configuration that is finally used uh, in OSNMA. But mainly, or more important, on what are the receiver conditions, what is the initial information that the receiver has, and also what is the environment. If the environment is, um, is bad, there are more uh, bit errors, and then it takes longer. So uh, we cannot say that there is a number that is the time to first authenticated fix. There is a distribution. You, you do experiments, you, you, you get a distribution of values. But um, I, I, I expect, according to the experiments that have been done, that uh, in, a, in relatively good visibility of the satellite, so in, in open sky conditions, if the receiver has um, the root key available, which is a, a reasonable assumption, the time to first fix, first on the dedicated fix, will be around um, two minutes on average plus minus 30 seconds, so something between one minute and a half, two minutes and a half. If the receiver doesn't have the root key uh, available, has to take receive it from the signal in space, uh, then the time to first authenticated fees, I think it's going to be around uh, three and a half minutes, plus minus one minute, depending on how lucky you are with the with the timing of the transmissions and also the quality the, the quality of the reception. So in, this would mean that in the worst case would be in between two minutes and a half and uh, and four minutes and a half. But um, uh, as I said, a reasonable assumption is that the root key is available. So in that sense, maybe the average is uh, yeah, one minute and a half, something like this, two minutes. Yeah, remarkably, uh, remarkably prompt. Uh, Giovanni, can patrol be used as a benchmark for uh, for mass market OSNMA implementations? Well, uh, if we take uh, what basically also we uh, we heard from uh, from Alessandro Chimenti, for sure yes, because in the end uh, uh, we implemented uh, OSNMA. Uh, stuck completely in a mass market receiver, in a really close to market uh, uh, chip. And so in the end, it is the first implementation that uh, goes to silicon. Uh, we had a number of, uh, let's say, low maturity testing phase, etc. But this is really the, the first uh, mature and uh, field proven uh, uh, prototype that we built. So yes, absolutely. Absolutely. A final question for Alessandro. Uh, has uh, ST Micro already got any requests from the market to support OSNMA? Uh, thank you, Alan, for, for this question. Uh, uh, the, answer, the short answer is, is yes. Uh, and for sure, uh, the customers today as, uh, are requesting it. Uh, uh, are the ones uh, uh, coming from the, the smart tachograph uh, application. Uh, that that is uh, what we see, but and but we do believe that uh, uh, the number of customers that will request for it as soon as the OSNMA uh, testing phase first, and then the, the, the final implementation will be uh, operative. Uh, uh, we will receive a lot of uh, requests from uh, any uh, kind of application and customers. Thank you. Well, this has You're been welcome. a very illuminating hour and a half. Uh, it has sped by and now come to a close. I want to thank the audience for attending. I want to thank all our panelists for uh, informing us about this historic uh, event that's, that is happening and that is about to happen further and we'll, uh, for our audience, uh, follow the pages and the website of Inside GNSS 
for developments uh, in this. We'll surely cover it very thoroughly. Uh, I'd like to call on each of our panelists in turn for a uh, concluding remark or a farewell. Uh, let's just go in the order of speaking. Flavio, Gonzalo, Giovanni, and Alessandro. Flavio? Thank you, Alan. I will be very brief because I see that we're running out of time. I think that uh, today we heard uh, very important news. So after a very long-lasting uh, kind of uh, waiting of this capability where cinema is coming live, so please uh, join this, uh, catch this opportunity, and uh, many congratulations to Padro Project who demonstrated in the field that uh, this capability brings really added value. Thank you very much. Indeed. Gonzalo. Uh, yes, uh, just emphasize that I think OSNMA is a very important feature of uh, Galileo. I hope that we have provided here um, a, 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 a high-level view of what, what what is it and what are the capabilities and the and the potential. And um, and I, as I said, uh, in order to use it, I think a more detailed explanation and uh, look at the documents will be necessary and there will be I think many more uh, workshops and opportunities to 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 do that yeah that's what that's all yes indeed authentication will become a new watchword uh, Giovanni yeah well thank you very much uh, everyone for attending uh, please let me <laughs> give me a word to congratulate with the uh, with the, the patrol team, really, uh, the achievement we we had uh, are really, really, really important. Uh, uh, it has been a pleasure to work with them. So thank you to FDC, to GMV, to ST Micro, to University of Padova, and also to Actia. So really, thank you all again for having the the, the possibility the, the, of uh, showing you what we obtained with really a hard work and a very good collaboration at the European level. Indeed, uh, the Europeans are becoming very well known for collaboration, especially on GNSS projects. Alessandro. Yeah, so I can only to uh, reinforce uh, what Giovanni is saying. It has been a really a pleasure to be part of this uh, project uh, that uh, we do believe uh, is a uh, uh, pave the street uh, to to, to uh, authenticate the PBT, which is for sure a, a key a key feature for the GNSS market. So thanks uh, to the team, thanks to USPA to, to found the, the project, uh, thanks to the European community to have uh, think about uh, such uh, interesting uh, feature. So, and thanks to the uh, attendance, to uh, wide attendance of today webinar. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, may I say once again that it's been a privilege to host this webinar. Signal authentication has long been needed. It will long be needed in the future, and we are seeing it come to fruition, a remarkable GNSS achievement. Uh, this is Alan Cameron, Editor-in-Chief of Inside GNSS Magazine. Thank you very much for attending this webinar, and with that, we'll say farewell for this Wednesday. Lori. And thank you as well uh, to our sponsor and co-host Inside GNSS, Inside Unmanned Systems, and Quascom. Thanks for joining us. This is Lori Dearman saying hope we see you on the next one. Bye for now.